What's up, guys? Welcome to nine of 2022 of the Murder Mentality. Um, appreciate you tuning in. Let's get that foggy lens on there. <laughs> there we go. Alrighty. Let's rap about it, guys. All right. So, um, something that's been on my mind a lot lately. Uh, let's talk about like what happens when we start really succeeding in life and what happens when we start really like hitting our goals and doing big shit and how that can actually be majorly our undoing. Um, first off, I think one of the biggest problems is that we tend to have this idea that we need to look for a goal and achieve a goal. And we start validating ourselves based off of the things that we want to achieve, the things that we want to do, and the things that we want to like, you know, just the goals basically. We start validating based off of actually achieving those instead of being the person that was able to achieve those. Um, I've talked about this before, man. Um, one of my favorite Kobe Bryant quotes was he says, the dream isn't winning, you know, the playoffs. The dream is the fucking work. It's the practice. It's sitting up long nights and shooting more baskets than anybody you've ever met. That's the fucking dream. The grind is the dream. All right. And so what I see a lot of people do, and I've fallen victim to this myself, if I'm not careful, all of us can have it happen, is that we get comfortable because we start doing real well. It's okay, man. I want people to do good. We should be doing good. It should be our goal to just have our highest calling to really be just out there and making shit happen. All right. But once we do that, it's very important that we keep up the things that we did to get there, okay? It's like, for example, if I use a bunch of tools to build the business here that I have, and then I stop using them, as soon as it starts to do well, kind of shoot myself in the dick, right? It's like, it's why when you're doing well financially, you should reinvest more money into advertisements, it's why when you're doing well as a sports team, you should be practicing fucking more. If you win the playoffs, you don't take a fucking year off. You, you go back and you double down so that when you get back into the next season, you're crushing it from the gate. But all too often, we get comfortable. And that's really what tends to happen to most people when they get knocked off of their top position. They got comfortable. They got too used to being the person that was like, everybody was like, damn, that dude is savage. Damn, that motherfucker is always crushing, always crushing. So it's like they have this like chip on their shoulder now. And that exact chip on their shoulder was where their focus was when they got hit and knocked down off of it. So let's, let's be honest, guys. Like, first of all, you didn't achieve shit. I've never achieved shit. Nothing I've ever done has been all me. It's like, I hate that phrase when people say, oh, I'm self-made, self-made. No, you're fucking not. Okay. Nobody in the world is self-made. Let's get that shit out of the way right now. Nobody's business is self-made. Nobody is period self-made. We're all building off of the information, knowledge, people that came before us. Even if it's not somebody you directly know, everything that you understand has been taught from generation to generation, from one person to the next for you to even be who you are. So you are literally, first of all, connected to the whole human race. And more importantly, why the hell aren't you going to give a little bit of glory to the one that made you give a little bit of glory to God. Let's give just a all the, let's be honest, all the credit. Okay. All the credit to God. <laughs> I know lots of really talented people that are not making it because they're outside of alignment with their creator and what they need to be doing. And I know a lot of people who aren't particularly talented that are out there absolutely fucking crushing it because they're in alignment they're in alignment with God, with love, with the ideas that they need to be doing, and they're able to get the things that they want, to do the things they want, and affect the people they want because they have a giving spirit. They have love in their heart. They literally are being as, as much like their creator as they can. Literally, you can't outgive God. You cannot fucking outgive God. And if you can't outgive God, then maybe we should give it our best run for our money. Maybe we should start looking at the rest of the world. What can I give to make sure that the people around me have value in their lives from me being part of it, all right? 
And that ties right back into it, man. When you're steady winning, if you're not putting in as much effort to build everyone else up around you, and you're just standing on a pile of your own accomplishments, you're not giving any credit to anybody that's helped you get there. You're not helping bring them up. That's outside of alignment with God. That's outside of alignment with, with any type of spirituality. We're not meant to just live alone and to, to sit on a pile of things that we've bought with all of the things we've done and just be like, finally I made it, man. I finally got a Maserati. I finally got a fucking mansion. I finally... It's not how it works. The most successful people in the world are always grinding and they're always giving. I've talked about this before. The person who goes the extra mile will always be welcome everywhere they go. And that's because that person is always going the extra mile. Let's just look. When you're when you're failing, when you're losing, when you're struggling, it's easy to justify putting 150% into everything cuz you know you fucking have to. But again, to quote Inky Johnson, if you're doing what's required of you only because it's required and you're not going above and beyond the prerequisite, beyond the basic requirement, you will never see any type of success outside of what is very basic. If you can't separate yourself from the herd in whatever you do, be more committed in every way, shape, and form than the people who are competing with you for whatever you're trying to get or do, you're going to look just like one of them. That's why that old phrase where it's like, you know, uh, fitting in gets you forgotten. Standing out might get you hated, but you'll be remembered. <laughs> Jack Sparrow was always saying, people would be like, you're without a doubt the worst pirate I've ever heard of. And he's like, <laughs> but you have heard of me, haven't you? And I know for a fact that it, it does work that way, man. I don't care if people hate my, my art. I don't care if they love my art. I don't care if they hate me or love me. It doesn't matter. My self-worth is the same regardless because I know who created me. I know who put this passion in me. I know who gives me the skills, who's given me the drive, the interest, the love, and the care to want to get good at the things I have. And I know that because of that, all of those other people don't fucking matter. Validation from people liking what I'm doing with my life is if fucking relevant. Some of the most important people throughout history have had the most fucking haters. going all right they kept going when they were winning they kept going when they were struggling they kept just doing the right thing and god gives us the choice between death and life between curses and blessings and somebody said something the other day and it hit me really hard and i've been thinking about it hella hard since then it's like they were saying, well, you, sometimes you got to choose the lesser of two evils. And I'm going to continue thinking about this as much as possible. But I don't believe God ever gives us a, a situation where we have to choose evil or evil. I think that there's always a third option that we're not considering because we're not comfortable with it. I think that maybe one of the two options isn't really evil, but we're trying to pretend it is because it's not what we fucking want. Well, what we want sometimes is fucking ridiculous. Let's be honest, if we all got what we wanted and not what we earned, the world would be fucking horrible. <laughs> and a lot of people will say that the world is horrible now, but it's absolutely fucking not. It's not nearly as bad as everybody wants to make it out to be. We ask you to do something that's a little bit different than the topic of discussion, but I think that you'll find that you will have such massive dividends paid from it. Again, though, you have to do it not because you want to. You just have to do it because it's the right thing to do and because you, like, not because you want, because you want compensation, but because it's the right thing to do and you want to. I want you to give something to somebody, be it time, energy, love, work, practice, whatever the fuck. Take something that, that took you energy, time, and love to make or do and give it to somebody else free of charge. Okay, don't do that all the time. I mean, obviously you got to make a living. But like, I just finished making this painting here. I'll just give you an example here real quick. Like literally, I just finished making this painting here. Everybody here in Kentucky and, and Ohio, I'm sure are going to love it because, you know, the Bengals hit the Super Bowl. Go Bengals. I'm not even really a football fan. But it was just something somebody suggested because you're like, man, that's going to get a lot of attention. I'm, cool. So, you know, but I got finished and I was like, Phew. What am I going to do? Put that up on my wall? I don't really care about it that much. But I thought of somebody and I knew somebody for sure that would love to have that. That like it would mean so much to them. 
I just sent them a picture and they're like, damn son, that's cool. You painted that? And I was like, yeah, man, it's yours. <laughs> Not because I want some type of compensation, but that person has given me so much value in my life already that I could not describe how important they are to me, first of all. And they've done it every time out of pure love and given me their time, attention, and energy without ever thinking twice. Always. And because of that, I want to give back to them. <laughs> right now, my business is winning like a motherfucker. My, my team winning like a motherfucker. Guess what we're getting ready to do right now? All of us. Every person in the shop, except for Lacey <laughs> and Abba, but every artist in the shop is getting ready to do 30 pieces of art, finished pieces of art in 30 days. That means at this shop, we're going to produce 180 pieces of art, finished quality, tattooable or not. I mean, you can tattoo that if you wanted to, but it's just a portrait, you know, but 180 in 30 days. And we're coming into busy season right now. Here's the thing. Everybody else is like, oh, we're coming into busy season. I'm going to be too busy to do anything else but tattoo all the time. Man, fuck that, pussies. We ain't about that out here. We're about taking our winning season and making it into an even bigger winning season. We're about giving so much fucking value, so much content, so much of our heart and soul into this that God has no choice. It's not even has no choice, but it's just in his nature to bless the things that people put that type of energy into. Literally, like, anytime you start telling yourself, man, I don't got the time to do this. I don't got the time to do that. I don't got the time to do this. Just shut the fuck up <laughs> and kick that shit into high gear, dog. Make it happen. I promise you, I promise you, if you stop saying I ain't got the time to do it and start kicking it into high gear and eliminating things that aren't serving what you want, you'll have plenty of time. And if not, if you're winning so steady, you're so busy, you know, like monetarily making so much money that everything is just, you're on top of the world, pay somebody else to help some of the stuff, pay somebody else to get rid of some of the busy work and start doing what the fuck you're good at some more. Quit trying to pile it all in the corner. Level up with somebody. Promise you, I promise you, promise you, <laughs> got the hookups on that shit. I know it works. I wouldn't tell you guys to do something I haven't done myself. But at any rate, like I said, I'm going to invite you guys to do something scary. Take some of your time, which is probably very valuable to you if you know what's going on and do something fucking big and awesome. Just period to have fun doing it and then fucking give it to somebody who you know will really value it and tell me that you can't take that feeling that you already have of just winning and crushing it and take it a step higher because you know you gave of yourself when you were already feeling like you were on top of everything. And then do that when you're on the bottom too. You'll feel a lot better all the time. Just give, win, give, win, give, win, give, win, give. Period. That's the, that's the whole formula. Wash, repeat. The end. Love y'all. See you tomorrow.